Hello, wonderful people who cannot sit at home. Thank you so much for joining me. This video is going to be all about the third portion of underrated road trips around Ontario. And before I go into it, here's my road trip journal. It's packed with amazing Ontario road trips, and there's going to be a fall winter version of this journal coming out in October. So most of these trips, again, are very underrated. I think they're absolutely amazing. And most of them are actually in the southwestern area of Ontario, which is called Essex County. So we actually did all of these trips in three days time. You can definitely do that, or you can just do day trips. That's also possible. And the first amazing destination I want to talk to you about is Point Pelee National Park. This is a really wonderful park. I did not know that it would be this much fun. The entrance was about $14, but definitely worth it. First stop, you get to this kind of marsh area and you get to explore. There is a loop of boardwalk loop that you can walk around look at the people doing kayaking or of course you can kayak yourself another amazing location of the point Pelee national park is the actual point which is the most south, which is the most southern point in ontario that's um the the inland ontario not the island part and this is where we're going right now so you go to the visitor center and there's a bit of a museum over there and uh, they also have a free shuttle bus that takes you all the way closer to the point the tower over here that I'm showing you was actually closed, but you can definitely uh, climb the observation tower once it gets opened. And over here we are walking. First, uh, we kind of went onto the beach and I actually left my mom here because she didn't want to go all the way over there. And, and here's the point that I actually went by myself. The water was really cold, but so beautiful. It actually felt like it's an ocean. And over here I am at the very tip of the Ontario. So this is the most southern point of Ontario. And over here I'm coming back. So another thing I want to point to you about this park is that it has a lot of red sand. And when you look at this red sand, you also see the black kind of particles. We had a magnet and if you just kind of wiggle it in there, the magnet, you will pick up this black dots they're called magnetite which is I think essentially is a magnet and it's so much fun collect for it and it's just a fun thing to do okay up next I want to talk to you about Pili Island which is the I guess this is the most southern point that's the island that's publicly accessible there's another island that's even more southern but it's not public so what you need to do is you need to book the ferry and uh, the ferry is about an hour and a half long over here is just kind of settling down into the ferry you do need to show up about an hour earlier for the ferry you can go with your car you just need to make sure to book it I was not able to book it with my car so we had to leave the car in the parking lot which was free and we had to go uh, just by foot really uh, the fee for the ferry was not that much it was like $15 return what we did is we did rent a golf cart. So Pili Island actually lets you rent a golf cart, which was a lot of fun actually, I really enjoyed it. There's even a bigger video about my Pili Island experience, I'm gonna link it down below, definitely check it out. Because it actually gives you a bunch of tips and tricks of how to book and what to do on the island, because it was actually quite challenging, a lot of things were closed. There are some limitations because the island is quite large, but the our golf cart was not that fast. So basically check it out. Uh, another underrated trip that seems like there's really not a lot of popularity, but I think it's absolutely amazing is Sarnia. So it's only three hours and about 15 minutes away from Toronto. It's not that far and it's gorgeous. First, you have to check out the bridge. I'm going to link it down below the location of it. So there's, of course, the gorgeous turquoise water. That's what Sarnia and Lake Huron are known for. You get to walk the kind of like a lake shore. There's a path uh, on the, of course, Canadian side. The other side is American side. And uh, it's beautiful. Another thing, another location of Sarnia is Kanata Park. Over here is just a couple of shots of that. Of course, they have a casino. In the casino, there's a very nice uh, restaurant that just has a beautiful view. We did not go to that restaurant, but we did go to Victory Buffet. It's a really well, lots of options, really well done uh, buffet restaurant that I actually haven't been in so long. And uh, I really enjoyed it. It had a lot of seafood, it had a lot of meat, everything was really quality. And the price was not that bad. It was about, I want to say about $28.
so another place that we did eat at was Purdy's Fish Market. So the actual fish market does have the fish. We did not buy because we didn't have a fridge. Outside you can see the fish boats, which is really cool to see. And even more kind of to the left of the fish boats, you will have the pickerel station where you can, yeah, you can get some fresh pickerel uh, fried and it, the, it was so yummy. Definitely highly suggested. We stayed at the Airbnb that was actually a converted marina. Um, so over here is just me showing you what's inside. There's a little kitchen. There is a bedroom. But I think the highlight for me was the huge balcony that faced the channel and the marina itself. And you get to see the boats. And over here is the morning. And uh, just look at this view. Absolutely gorgeous. And the boats kind of pass you by. You can even sit at your dock on your balcony and enjoy enjoy a very interesting view I'm, I'm also gonna link down below the Airbnb that I used up next the next amazing destination is is Green Hill Gardens so this garden is first of all it's beautiful there's lots to see and but what really blew me away is that this is actually they have a really large lotus field of gorgeous beautiful lotuses so this was about end of July I'm not sure how long lotuses bloom for. I don't know if this was just one time thing and that's it, or they bloom throughout the summer. Uh, but it was so beautiful, never seen this in my life really. And uh, yeah, completely free to enter. You can definitely explore the park. There's more areas of it that are just gorgeous, but I was mainly really blown away by the fact that there are lotuses in Ontario. I have never heard of that. Up next we have the Shale Ridge Estate Winery, which is another beautiful winery. It's kind of close to Sarnia, it's on the way, but I think it's actually worth a road trip of itself. It's about three hours away from Toronto. Beautifully done. It's still some parts of it are still being built, but overall it's absolutely gorgeous. Here's the view of it, and the highlight of it is that you get to sit on these swings, and I don't know, it's just a really cool way to sit <laughs> you do need to pay a little extra it's five dollars extra for the swings make sure to book them in advance because they do especially on the weekend get uh, booked up really fast they had kombucha on top which was amazing highly recommend that and we had a really nice charcuterie board over there also really great The next destination I want to talk about is going to start at the Longovita Beach Retreat. So this is actually a place where I suggest you could stay because it's just very interesting. It has the beautiful safari tents or the domes, but also that area has about, uh, I don't know, from five to ten different wineries that are absolutely breathtaking. So over here is one of the wineries. I'm going to link this winery down below. It's called Viewpoint. Over here you can also have something to eat but really for me it was the view it's just open view of Lake Erie gorgeous gorgeous place and there was a number of actually different wineries we visited they were all really beautiful so I was surprised to find out that there's a whole wine kind of region away from um, Niagara Falls which is what I usually consider the wine region but there's another one in Ontario and another amazing destination is Jumbo the Elephant so this elephant there's a first of all there's a huge elephant that is i, I think it's larger than life size um the, that's a memorial actually because this elephant was killed here unfortunately about a hundred years ago when it was here for the circus and and that's why the town of saint thomas decided to create this memorial but also right by the elephant you can even walk uh for a couple of minutes and you will get to St. Thomas Elevated Park. This is a really beautiful park that's built on a bridge, on an old bridge, and you get to have all of these cool art installations that I think they all make sounds from the wind. Really interesting to explore, beautiful view down. And uh, I actually, it reminded me a lot of Highline in New York because it has kind of like that feeling. And it was just so much fun and it's also free to enter. So that concludes my third portion of underrated road trips in Ontario. 
I think these, all of these are absolutely amazing. You need to go, you need to make sure that you check them out. And of course, please subscribe, like, and share to my channel if you enjoy my videos. Thank you so much. Bye.